Hi, I'm Brian Sparks, Senior Editor of Greenhouse Grower. Welcome to our Shop Talk Tech Tips series on greenhousegrower.com. This month, we are talking with disease experts to learn more about the most challenging greenhouse pathogens, how growers can identify them, and best practices for controlling them. We recently sat down with Matthew Brecht of Marone Bio Innovations to talk about Fusarium. Here's what he had to say. The biggest thing you understand about Fusarium is that most of this Fusarium diseases are a soil-borne root disease. Um, so it's like soil-borne, uh, but it's um, you know, root and stem rots. There, there can be a foliar aspect to it, but um, most of the stuff that we deal with is a um, root and stem rot. Typically, it's, a, it's an issue in our greenhouses or indoor you know, growing systems in that it really likes warm, wet weather. So if you have typically, you know, greenhouses are 75 degrees, you know, plus, uh, which is um, right in the ideal window for fusarium to grow and um, infect. Is when the plant is really um, young. So they're like the seedling stage, the transplant stage, or the young veg stage. That's when they're really, they're, they're the most susceptible to the disease. The fungus will get into the roots uh, or the stems and basically cause an infection um, and eventually get into the vascular system. So uh, the xylem and phloem, and then it basically gums, gums up the flow of the, the water. So the, the xylem, which you know, transports up the, the, the water. The fusarium produce three types of um, uh, st structures. Uh, so we have microconidia, macroconidia, and um, we call resting spores or uh, chlamydia spores. Excuse me. Um, and so these spores are then very easily dispersed in the air and the water. And so if you have a you know a, a fan system and you've got some active growth of mycelium on a plant that's you know producing these spores, that those spores could then you know move around the air, uh, move around the room either through the air or through the water system. One of the biggest ways to prevent root and stem rot is to reduce the soil moisture or at least the wetness of that you know, saturation over a period of time to reduce that as much as possible when you first start out um, you know, with your new seedlings and transplants. Um, and that can really reduce how much you know, disease you, you actually get. Um, and if you really have an issue with it, a real problem is because those spores are coming from somewhere else. So sanitation is a big um, is a big deal when it comes to you know growing plants indoors because typically most of the inoculum, most of the spores that are that are infecting these plants, be it, be it ornamentals, be it vegetables, um, you know, be it cannabis, is that um, they're coming in from they're coming in from that area typically within that greenhouse, not necessarily blowing in from outside, either though they can, but we're talking like a closed environment, like a, a cannabis a grow operation. Um, most often they come from the mother plants. So there's spores that are being harbored on by the mother plants or some kind of other, um, you know, root material that's sticking around that is, you know, producing spores and, you know, injecting them into the air, or they're going back into um, some kind of water system that they have. So, um, spores can be recirculated through this water system if they have a recycla recirculating water system. So if you have an affected plant, that infected plant then can you know basically transfer all to the other ones. <laughs>